All right. Are we going live? <laughs> Otherwise, we'll just go live. Yes, we are live. We are alive. Yes, we, we are, are alive. Alive. <laughs> no, we are live. We are just live, not alive. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a conversation about bodies. And we have world. We have Urja Shroff with her lovely mother, Amisha Shroff, mm -hmm. who are both mm -hmm. wonderful CFs from Mumbai. Say mm -hmm. hi. Hi, Chandra. Thank you. <laughs> and we have lovely Isha from Hello. LA. Lovely CF from LA, who just happens to be my daughter. <laughs> and we also have the wonderful Palak Khanna, who's a wonderful mother from Bangalore and a fabulous CF. So welcome, lovely ladies from all around the world. And truly, how did I get so lucky to have a conversation with four of you? Thank you for us having, having us, Chandana. Oh, you're welcome, my dear. So just before we got on to this, this live, we were, we were talking about, you know, how, how interesting this conversation is for us. I hope it's as interesting for the rest of you. But it's kind of really interesting for us because, you know, we're like moms and daughters and, and you know, we have this, this little, it's like a little coffee, coffee get-together where we're really going to be talking about bodies and the creation of bodies from a space of what family expects you to look like, to be like, based on your genetics, you know, based on your dad, based on your mom, based on your grandparents. I mean, how much of that is truly a reality for almost everyone on this planet? Yeah, so who's going? <laughs> This is such an exciting um, conversation to be invited to. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, what came to me first, of course, you know, like we were having this conversation and we were, you know, bringing our awarenesses in about what it really brings up for everyone. What, what was really interesting and the energy, what br it brought up for me was so many of us are um, taught to go into reaction instantly with, uh, people who are close to us you know and family are people who are very close to us uh, and we have a lot of charge a lot of times where they're concerned so instantly we either go into you know rejecting the awarenesses that come from them or we go into accepting the awarenesses that come from them which is like both polarities of either okay we'll if there's a family member that comes up to us and they're share, sharing their, their awareness about bodies, about what they think we should be doing, what something uh, different to what we're already doing, a lot of times our instant reaction is like, no, <laughs> you know, that's who you are. That's maybe the way your generation does it. I'm different. Um, my world is different, my time is different, and my body is different, and so on and so forth. But what if there was something different available with our reality and our bodies where we didn't have to go into instantly, you know, chopping them off, you know, from our reality and also rejecting their awareness or, you know, having to accept what they're saying? What if we could ask for what is true for us? To show up and if it's heavy what if it, what if instead of going into rejecting them we could just ask for you know what is the truth with all the lies attached over here what if i could what if i could just take what is true for me from this in this conversation it doesn't matter who it came from it's just what is true for me over here and run with that without having to cut either your your awareness of or yourself of or them 
but the actual wow, question that. is really like yeah. what is true for me and my body and my world over here and who cares whether it came from them or from you or from someone else everyone is here to be a contribution to each other and we're here to be a contribution to ourselves and everyone else so what else is really possible with families and bodies i wonder i love what you said you know you said rejecting their awareness but how often does that show up as rejecting them like you know in that moment when we react we are actually reacting by rejecting their awareness or or their judgment whatever of the two often times you're rejecting their judgment because you're just so aware of their judgment out there but in that rejection are you just rejecting the judgment or the awareness or are you are you rejecting the person it's really interesting how bodies and relationships get kind of intertwined in that way because you know creating a body not wanting to look like mom while wanting to look like mom not wanting to look like dad while wanting to look like dad could create quite a conflict in your world what do you think urja i actually resonate with and echo with so much of what she both said there is an energy of who you're supposed to be as a child of how much you have to be your parents even as a little kid when you're born and like oh, how does he look like a father or does yeah. he or she look like the mother <laughs> and as they kind of grow up they're so aware of their parents bodies and aware of how they function that they start kind of replicating duplicating and mimicking how they their parents are in the world when when <laughs> the different conversation here that we could have is how much could the parents or the mother kind of stop projecting things at their children stop telling them what to be what to look like how to eat what to how to move their body and just everything and genuinely ask them questions to start listening to how their body is communicating with them and that's such a different reality when you start empowering yourself to start listening to the whispers that your body does communicate with you throughout your lifetime especially when you're children like you know when there's a fuss or when the children are like kind of not uh, eating you don't have to shove that shove that shove that food in their mouth or when they're oh. growing up as a teenager yeah. and they're comparing their bodies with their friends what if you could say what embracing and uniqueness and individuality does your body have that you don't have to judge or compare or right or wrong about it it's such a different way of being on the planet where you're including the growth the changes and not making it based on other people's projections even if it's just your parents yeah yeah i love that yeah where projections really it's almost and you know when you talk about the projections on you as a child it's it's generally energetic right more than verbal it's so very often energetic and kids are so so aware of the energy because energy is, is the first language and they hear it and energetically you might be projecting something totally different to what you're verbalizing and that creates such a confusion in the child's world too you know with their body with what mom is saying with what dad is saying what do i know what i know is that wrong and there's there's really this massive confusion in the child's world where you know they start to create their body from that confusion now it's interesting when uja spoke about feeding that last that one bite remember you shall nice to run after you i don't know if you remember but maybe you remember oh, i remember i remember, I, remember. <laughs> <laughs> i would run after her with the plate and the spoon one last bite i thought if she won't eat that one last bite oh my god <laughs> she would go hungry <laughs> i mean it's just me as a mother who did that i'm sure no other mother did no that. one else did that <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> Amish, yeah. I'd love to know your yeah. your take on that. <laughs> yeah, so I did it too. I did it too. So yeah, the last bite, you know, the last morsel on the plate has got to kind of be eaten up. And if the children don't eat, the mom finishes it. And what does that create <laughs> for me? 
and what does that create for moms so yeah it was it was it was a huge thing that the plate has to be empty before it goes for washing and that yeah. now when i reflect that what did i do to the children's bodies or what did i do to my body when that showed up you know every time the last morsel on the plate has to be done and dusted uh, it cannot wow. be thrown away and i mean that lasted for many many years till i came into access and didn't wrong myself for not being able to finish the light last bite in my plate yeah. and it was okay to let it go rather than be dumped in your body um, yes that was a great uh, awareness for me to kind of you know honor my body and respect my body more than you know kind of just shoving it down you know though you were hungry or not but kind of you've got to finish it and that was huge yes. for a very very Thank long time Thank you for that yeah Misha I remember that I remember I did that too so like any yeah. food left and and their food used to be always so tasty it had a lot of ghee in it <laughs> Double, double, double load of ghee. Yeah. <laughs> double load of ghee because we had to prove our love for our children with that extra extra spoonful of ghee in the food. I mean, how often do at least we Indian moms? I'm sure nobody else does that. It's just us Indian moms where we prove our love to our kids by feeding them, overfeeding them, and never say no to food. But what yeah. if it's still not wrong? Yeah, true that. And I really wonder what are the mothers aware of with regards to the bodies of their kids. You know, the I think I think I think what occurs is that a lot of times, how many times are mothers aware of what their you know the children's bodies are asking for, but then they don't ask another question. Okay, is it done? Are we done now? Yeah. Just like what yeah, if we continue yeah. to what if it doesn't what if it's not a wrongness and what if it stemmed from actual awareness. But at some point, it just became a conclusion. Ah, oh, yeah, that's so wrong. Yeah. Yeah, how much of it actually came from awareness? Maybe you knew your child is hungry, but distracted in those 10 seconds. But then you decided that's always the case with your child. So every time, you know, you're feeding, you're like, you've already gone into that conclusion that he's distracted. I have to force him to eat. There's so Balak many. Such, is here with, yeah. Sorry, Ulja, no, there's so many it. such family systems that are placed on how you, that particular family works in the household mm -hmm. and how each body kind of reacts to that system. It's like the mother is taught that this is what from like generations onwards, this is how you have to parent your child. This is how what they're supposed to eat. If they're not eating this, they're wrong. How are they a malnourished baby? Are they too healthy baby? Are they growing up enough adequate, adequately based on their age, based on how they're supposed to kind of be in the world with school to their school? Their height, their weight, everything exactly. is monitored. And, and that, that energetic judgment is thrown at the child, at their bodies, and they get it. I mean, the kids get it energetically that, oh, I disappointed my mom. Or I disappointed my dad, you know, my body is a disappointment. How often do they hear that when the doctor says, There's the so doctor much says, charge to that. right? Yeah, I mean, everything that brought up. <laughs> right on with that, but fuck online shots, boys, for I said before. And we do have Palak here, who's a lovely mom of two lovely, lovely kids, Palak, and who's, I mean, Amisha and I, we've done that. We've been there. Palak is right now there. <laughs> I was on mute. It's, I mean, this conversation is just so, so, so kind of, you know, it just gets you into so many questions and so, so much just showing up. Yeah. So, what I truly get is like, you know, number one, like, no two kids are the same. But what's very, very loud in my world is that while there is one part of us where we say that we are projecting it on kids, but how much kids are picking up the judgments of mother of her own body and trying to heal the mother through their body. Wow. And 
it's it's like it just feels like it's it becomes at some point in time a generational thing wherein one mom doesn't is projected on or doesn't like her body for whatever reason and then it just goes on in different forms and till somebody really pauses and asks a question yeah literally stops that literally becomes the interrupt to that going into the next few generations that's yeah. so amazing and, yeah and wherever we are wherever we are like like i love the way isha said what if it wasn't wrong that our moms asked us to finish that last morsel on our plate and like either they came from their awareness or they came from what they knew uh but does that work with my child like i know for sure like with my elder one i can you know say and do things with my younger one i have to get like you know it has to be a at least a un level negotiation before anything that we do and he's just a five year old <laughs> like i really have to give him answers why we are not doing what we are doing why we are doing what we are doing and all of that and and that's okay <laughs> and then at some point in time i have to tell him like just the other day he came said he told me why were you fighting with me i said when was i fighting when we were playing in the room you came and you were fighting with me and didi no i wasn't fighting i was scolding you let's let's be <laughs> <clear about that. laughs> Yeah, there's a different energy between fighting and scolding for sure. I wasn't. <laughs> so, so it's like you know what I love about the whole conversation and access and bodies is that asking a question and not rejecting. Uh, like how how much does one? judge their bodies because it's not really their judgment of their body because it was somebody else's judgment in their family about their body mm. and most of when i've seen mothers like i've i've actually seen kids of age 10 11 going to gym because the mother is so conscious of her weight that the child either energetically picks up or mother projects because she feels that what she went through her child doesn't have to go through yeah and how often does a mother tell the child you must go for a run otherwise you'll become fat like brother or like father or like me or like you know that's that comparison mm -hmm. so it's like yeah. create your body so you're not wrong that's what the child hears constantly do yeah. so you don't become bad do so it's not wrong and it's like so interesting because you know if you, if you really start to look at i mean i find this actually so stifling more than interesting now when i look at it that how much of you know we, i remember we had this conversation once about how we were so many little girls cousins growing up together and how we were constantly compared to each other the color was compared the height was compared the the weight was compared and constantly the, the hair length was compared so you know the the nails i mean yours are brittle yours have white things on your nails there's something wrong with you and you know all these things were were constantly projected at at us as little kids so there was always you know and we would look at each other as one had a better body because they were taller one had a better body because they were slimmer one had a better body because they were fairer but you know we did in that in that in the bargain we forgot to acknowledge how beautiful we are and we just started to look at everybody else around us because we were just so so focused on who's got the right what yeah. you know and how right should the body be like like the really your shape size height defines who you are yeah yeah and how much body shaming is that from day one and we actually make it okay we actually allow people to pass judgments on our body and tell us what to eat and what not to eat so our body turns out the way they think is right yeah the right yeah and god forbid that you actually have the body that is different 
compared to all the other family members, then you're like, you're the only one that doesn't fit into the family because you don't look a certain way. You don't show up a certain way. And that is either wronged or made super right. And you're the one that should be getting what you're supposed to be getting. It's this level of functionality that somewhat binds you into the polarity, yes. And also sticking to one lane like you're ne- and if you suddenly put on a lot of weight they're like what's ha- what's wrong like you know what are you not looking at what are you not so i i get the concern that usually family has but underneath that there's such a, such a powerful amount of judgment that has an intensity that is so not real they have mask yeah. it with their <laughs> caring their superficial like you know like oh are you okay and then there's this subtle layer of judgment there's a subtle layer of sometimes envy and and there's this so what else can we be with that that is so different what else can we empower our parents or children to actually start embracing who they be or how they look or how their body shows up in the world that is so uniquely different. They don't even have to fit into the family that they're born into. I love what you just said. Taking, just joining the dots from where you left off, you know, where you said that um, our body keeps changing, right? Sometimes we put on a lot of weight. Sometimes we we shrink or whatever, so on, so forth. <laughs> I remember like having this question myself a few years ago, like every time I look at myself, my body is completely different. There have, and to this date, I don't think I've ever looked at myself and said in two moments, my bodies look the same. I don't think I can ever say that. I can never vouch for the fact that even if it's in a split of a second, my body always looks different to me. And it used to freak me out. Like, like what is going on? You know, I look away, I look back and I'm different. Is this real? <laughs> and I mean, half the world is fighting to maintain their bodies, you know, and the other half is fighting to get slimmer or fitter. So it's like, and here I am, every time I look at my body, something has changed. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that's when, like, that's when I was led to my awareness and like true, true question of really, our bodies are more conscious than anything ever. And what if our bodies and the earth are in true communion with each other? And if the earth is rotating and, and you know, moving every second, what makes us think that our bodies can ever be the same in a split of a second? Wow, yes. And our and body- the capacity is that. Yeah, yeah. My gosh. And I wonder if we all are truly willing to embrace and own and acknowledge that we can never go back to what our body was when we have, you know, whatever moment that was when we put it up on that pedestal, oh, I looked the greatest at this, I felt the best at this. I mean, the earth is shifting and changing and growing and moving and so are our bodies. And what if we were willing to just like embrace, own and acknowledge and be in communion with the earth? And if our bodies are changing and diff- and they look different every second, what awareness is your body giving you for everyone you know who feels like they're fighting their bodies in this moment what awareness is your body giving you in this moment that you're not willing to receive and what is your what does your body know that you require that it's showing up as that we're not willing to receive in this second that if we would receive would allow our body to to grow even more into what it knows is possible Wow, I love that question. That's so beautiful. All from losing weight and gaining weight. (laughs) Yeah. A different possibility. Along with the body shape and the body size, which this conversation I just so enjoyed where all we've gone, along with that is also such a... um, projected reality based on the genetics of the family like you know the diseases and if somebody has had diabetes then you must 
the kids must have it or someone had a heart problem. Be careful with your son because, you know, heart problem is in the family. And that's told so much that, you know, it's like, it's like a constant, constant throw at your body about how significant the genes are and how you can only create your life around the genes and not beyond them. Hmm. And, yeah. and you know, like one is getting information and the other is like really solidifying the whole thing. Like, uh, and I think I've said this earlier too, my mom was the youngest one in her family who was diagnosed with diabetes. And it was like the first, and then like, her elder siblings got it and her mother was the last one who was diagnosed with diabetes. And now it's like projected as, oh, it's genetically, so you guys have to be careful. Yeah. Like, what happened to the genetics before that? <laughs> How true is that? Yeah. <laughs> your, mom yeah. Chose, your mom chose something and everyone decided it must be the family yeah. because we care for yeah. each other and love each other so much. It's like, you know, Everything, everything is nowadays, everything is termed as genetics, right? And medical, this thing. And what if, what if it was not just the genetics and also we ask questions, who is healing whom? Yes. Yeah. And what capacities do we have with each others that we tend to tap into each other's world? Like, even after coming to Access, I remember for like so many times, it just so happened that I would fall or I would do like create something with my body. And a day or two later, I would figure out, oh, the same thing would have happened with mom. Till I started clearing that. I mean, it's not that my lo love for my mom reduced, but it was just the fact that it didn't have, like it didn't create greater to have two people on the bed, even if one, like, you know, whosoever was choosing it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, like, like we, as humanoids, we are anyway, way, way aware. And with, especially with people around us, it's just, I think, I get that it's, it just amplifies. Yes. Yeah. 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 What were you saying, Isha? No, just, just acknowledging the brilliance of that. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and what if we really didn't make it like, you know, wrong and just asked another question? Like, I just love the fact that Axis talks about asking a question. Mm. and like instead of going into a conclusion oh I have a healing capacity so I was healing my mom or like you know if I have that capacity my daughter would also do that for me mm. and, and also what, what, yeah yeah and what what difference can we like, you know, can we be like, it's, it's so amazing to even ask those questions and be in question, not just ask question, like be in question. Yes. And if you actually started to create your body from that space of being in the question and not, not agreeing and aligning with everything that's, that you've seen around you, around you with other bodies with family that you love with family that you care for and if there was no need to heal everyone from a space of unconsciousness but you know recognizing that everybody has the capacity to heal itself yeah. that's the beauty of bodies you know I mean a body could get cut and it would heal itself it'll It'll create a scab, and if, if the body, if somebody you cut your finger and it starts to bleed, it'll it'll make that scab over a few few days, and it'll heal itself, and it'll just the scab will fall off, and there may be a mark. It may not may not be a very pretty mark, 
but the body has no point of view of how it's going to heal itself. The body just is like, oh, I know how to heal myself. It may be an ugly scar, but hey, the body healed itself. But we go to the judgment of how the body heals, how the body mm -hmm. must heal versus acknowledging the capacity, the healing power and the capacity that the body has. If that's not magic on earth, I would, don't know what can be. Huh? Yeah. Truly, honey. Truly. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And well, talking about magic on earth, for me, the body processes are magic. <laughs> they create such a beauty. Amisha, you were saying something? Yeah, so uh, I had a scapular injury here. Uh, uh, you know, a few, um, two years back and uh, I had gone to a doctor and I was just told to rest it out and nothing changed for me in the next two, three months. And then I did some exercises, which I was told by my physiotherapist and that still didn't kind of ease any pain. And how did I get so lucky that, you know, there was a body process class that was announced in Delhi and I was like, I'm going to make it there. There's something really loud that pinged in my world. I was like, I know that this is going to create the ease. It was just a flash in my head. I was like, it's been six, eight months. Nothing else is changing. My upper body is just not moving, twisting. I'm not be, being able to do any exercise this is what is going to change and ease my pain. And when I chose the body process class, at the end of the three days, 80% of my pain was gone. And I wow. was like, that, I'll have more of that. And the next body process class that I chose, the pain was gone. And I was like, I'll have more of that. And the body processes and access are just magic and miracle. And it just creates an ease and awareness in the body that I have not felt through anything else because I'm really not a fan of popping pills. Um, that <laughs> medicines don't work for me. I would end up, you know, purchasing medicines which the doctor recommends and then not take them at all. So, um, getting into the knowing of access body processes and the way it changes the molecular structure in the body and the, the relaxation and the expansion and the awareness that it creates. It is, I have no words for what that creates for people who choose the body process sessions, classes, workshops, uh, and what will it take for more people to, you know, come in contact with these processes uh, and the magic that it can create for them? So, um, wow, that extremely is so grateful, beautiful. very, very grateful for access to and yeah. for uh, Gary Douglas to kind of bring the body processes into the world for everybody to experience that and. That has created magic for me and I wouldn't ever stop choosing access body <laughs> process classes, body process sessions or anyone willing to receive and gift these processes because it's not only for the person who runs the body processes, it kind of contributes to them. Um, it, I mean, it's a give and take. So gift and receiving. So the person who runs the body process also receives the process while gifting the process and how magical is that it's, totally. it's the yeah. most uh, amazing space that has been created through along with access body processes access facelift body process body processes access body processes which is like 50 to 100 different body processes which have been gifted by access consciousness in this world is the magic that i would really wish more and more people seek that and what would that create for families children um, any but elders in the family people going yeah. through different kinds of sickness pain discomfort in their body what awareness 
and different possibility would that create for them? That is a magic I would want people to choose. Oh, that is so beautiful, Amisha. What a beautiful ask, truly. It's like every body process opens up the body to more potency, you know, opens up the body to more power, creates so much more space between the molecules of the body that now the body truly has choice to heal itself. And not just physically, not just on the body level, which of course we get to see, but so much changes with relationships, so much changes with their money flow, so much changes with, you know, the, the way they, they show up in life. You know, so much starts to, sh- so, so much, they start to look so different. They start to, to kind of reverse their age instead of age the way they should. <laughs> yes. And it's just magical, like you said, it's truly magical and miraculous to see what a person looks like when they walk into a three-day body class and when they walk out of the three-day body class they look and they be so different absolutely yeah and every area of life it just opens up and expands a lot and yes more of that please yeah yes the nurturing and kindness that is present in these classes and the sessions and these energies is so much of receiving your body, including your body in the creation of your life, that it starts vibrating and emitting that energy that you be in the world, which is so, so different than anything else that I've seen out there. It's like every time I meet family, since we've been talking, they're like, you're glowing, you're glowing. (laughs) I'm like, have you been receiving so much more of me through these processes, through these tools and there is so much out there if you choose to kind of play with and choose to kind of get to know and empower yourself that this exists, like magic exists. Yeah. Yes, truly. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're all invited, sweethearts, to Palak. Details. Yes, three-day body class. <laughs> Adding to what Amisha and Ucha said, like, you know, when they were saying the whole energy of the body class per se is like, you get to access to about 60 odd processes. But it's also a space where you consider spending with your best friend, like, you know, somebody who, which you've never acknowledged like just being with your body for three days when do we get that opportunity i mean in a like on our daily lives how often do we check in with our bodies as to how are we doing but in three-day body class there you are with your body and a lot of other bodies and then just that the awareness is so high that you get present to not just like you know what you're looking at but things that you've never looked at too yes that and yes. Um, so we have a three-day body class on 28th 29th and 30th in bombay chandana is already there we have a beautiful venue and three beautiful hosts <laughs> Reena, suruchi and nishita so anyone who's listening to us you still have time hop on and uh, we will be happy to get you on board it like if you want Jaya and Amisha and Isha kind of glow on your faces (laughs) yeah Palak truly (laughs) we have three this is our first by the way this is our first call with Mrs. City so we should (laughs) bye (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you are right Palak this is our first call with Mrs. Sethi <laughs> <laughs> how did we get so lucky how did we get so lucky? That. Yes. <laughs> amazing <laughs> thank you my lovelies thank you dear Urja thank you Amisha thank you Isha thank you Palak I look thank forward you so to seeing you all And whether you are in the same country, in the same city, or in a different country, get yourselves to a three-day body class. How different can your bodies be? And how much fun can you have? 
So thank you once again and love you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.